butter dog. It's the dog with the butter. Butter dog. The dog with the butter. Butter dog. I got the butter on him. The dog with butter the butter. Dog. Dog with butter the butter on dog. Him. Butter dog. Man, we can make a great song out of this. Why don't we do that? <laughs> Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone, episode 176. It's 176. It's episode 176. How many more times are you going to say it, brother? Janice, did you get me some fluid? No. No, you didn't. It, 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 mu- the, the mug is empty on my table. Empty mug. Dog with the butter. Butter dog. It's a dog with the butter. Butter dog. Here's today's card. It's tradition around here to show you the card, but it's not tradition to show you what's on the card. But you'll, you will find out anyway, because we'll talk about it. I'm thinking about changing things up. I think, I'm thinking about instead of... It's tradition around here to show you the card, but it's not tradition to show you what's on the card, right? I think I want to make a tradition to show you what's on the card. But, well, not show you, but tell you what's on the card. So that you know what's in store, right? But no. Mm-mm. You'll find out anyway, because we'll talk about it. <laughs> it's the surprise. It's the surprise. Um, So episode 175 got scooped right off the YouTubes. It just... <clears throat> it got blocked. I kind of, you know, had a feeling it was going to because I used a word, a specific word a bunch of times in a joking manner, but that doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> we can't joke anymore. Are you f- kidding me? Can't even curse. Which is going to be difficult because I do it without even realizing that I do it. I say, <laughs> and the words come out. I was making a joke involving a certain individual who I don't even want to say his name because maybe that is why it kept getting... So it got blocked, removed from YouTube. No one can see it, okay? So I was like, ah, why YouTube? Tell me why. They just they just say it violates the guidelines and, and restrictions and whatnot. But there, but there, but there, <laughs> there was no time stamp. There was no like indication they didn't give a specific reason why it was taken down so i'm like okay it must be because of these words that i was using so i removed those words and then uh i uploaded it again and it all was good but then it got fucking blocked and taken down again so i'm like shh screw up my nuples what am i gonna do now so i uh i just edited out every single curse word exported it uploaded it again all right now if you're not familiar with editing or uploading to youtube all right if you've got minimal uh, uh, resources it takes hours and hours to export and then it takes hours and hours to upload so every time i have to re-edit re-export re-upload it's in it's hours some, it even takes like half a day, you know? So I edit out all the curse words. I re-uploaded. Guess what? It was all good. Until it got taken down again. So I'm like, whew. Well, I guess I'm taking out the chunks of the episode of the podcast that would be deemed controversial under everything that I know. About how YouTube works. So I removed those segments. I exported it. I uploaded it. Hours long process. Guess what? It was good. Until it wasn't. And they took it it down again. So I'm like, okay. 
I don't know what else I can do. They're literally just targeting this specific video. Well, the algorithm is. So I'm like, funk it, dude. Let's fudge this party up, baby. I just left it off YouTube and put up a video that says, this episode is not available in video format, but you can still listen to it. Spotify, iTunes, and Google Play, they don't give a fnoople. They don't care. Let it fly. I'm not, right? You know, it wouldn't be so bad. It wouldn't be so bad if YouTube would just give me a reason why. What did I do? What did I do wrong? And over the past few weeks, I've had 15 episodes <laughs> of the podcast become age-restricted. Huh? What? YouTube? Why, why, why are you picking on me r- right now all of a sudden? These episodes have been available for over a year now. Now all of a sudden you're like, this one, this one, this one. It was like every day I was getting three email notifications being like, okay, we've, we found three more that we think are not age appropriate. Here's three more. And, then, blah, 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 and it just kept going. And I was like, ah, is this going to get to a point where every single one of the episodes of the Dynamite Gizmo podcast are going to be age restricted? Is that what's going to happen? I don't know. I don't know. Whatever happened to the good old days of YouTube? The wild getting west. You remember those days? You could upload anything. I mean, not anything. But you, well, you could upload like pornographic material. And it would stay for a little while until an actual human picked up on it and removed it. You know, it was just like, you could say what you want, you could do what you want, but now you can't. Because there's too many, there's too many soft people out there that are just like, I don't want it, I don't want to see that, I don't want to hear that. And of course, you know, the age old argument, well, don't listen to it, but then they say, well, what if it, what if it gets into my ears somehow, what if my children hear it? What if this? What if that? What if? What if, dude? What? What the? Do you think's gonna happen? All right? Do you really like what? Yeah. Like what's the big deal? You're that sheltered that you can't even listen to another opinion or another way of talking. You just want to shut it all out of your life. Get it all out of here. You don't want it. Then don't look at it. Don't listen to it. It's that simple, ladies and gals. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> guys and gals. It is Halloween right now. Right as I'm recording this, it is Halloween. I'm hearing children out there. All right, I put a sign on the door, on my door, that says, F- off, children. No candy here. And you might be asking yourself, how how is Halloween happening where you're at? Well, that's because I live in a rural area in rural Alberta. Not a lot of people here. There's actually zero cases of, of corona where I'm at. But it's such a small town that phew, wouldn't even matter. Anyway, um, so yeah, Halloween's 100% on. Um, just it's just like any other old day here alright there's the odd person with a mask on but the majority of people you see walking around they ain't got a a mask on at all see even talking about the 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 the, the illness that's floating around even saying the word of which it is which I already said but You know, all these little things you got to take. And even saying the word mask, you know, is part of the fucking algorithm uh, uh, keywords that they look for. Because it's all fucking political now. This whole world's going to shit. All right? Whether Trump or Biden wins, all right? There's a couple more keywords. It doesn't matter. 
We're all... It's just, it's, it's just not going to work out. All right, there's going to be a big war. We're all going to be under control by one major leader. All right? We're all going to be enslaved and used, sucked dry of everything we have to the point where the whole world just collapses and we all kill each other. And there's no humans left. And then it has to start all over again like it has hundreds of thousands of times. Well, however many times it restarted itself. I don't know. I'm not a fucking... I'm, oh, I said an F. I said the F word. You better block this video and take it off YouTube. I said the fuck word. Take it down. And you know what else happened? I was supposed to have a guest on. All right? We had it all scheduled. You know? I was like, you. he was like, you want to do it then? And I'm like, yeah, that works for me. I gave him plenty of notice. I gave, you know, not plenty, but I gave him, a, you know, a notice being like, this is when it's going to happen. This is the time we're going to do it. Mark it in your calendar. And then like a day before, I'm like, yo, you ready? You ready to do this? No response. And then the day of, I'm like, hey, you ready to do this? We got two hours to go before we start this. No response. The time shows up and I'm like, this guy is still not here. The Zoom meeting is open and and in progress and waiting. And still nothing happened. No one showed up. So I'm like, okay, I'll give it 15 minutes. Never showed up. Just never showed up. Okay. I tried to respond, reach out and be like, hey, what happened? Do you want to re reschedule? That's fine. Whatever. Doesn't bother me. We'll just reschedule. Still no response. So I'm like, okay. And I've got another person lined up. This person is better than the original person. All right. He, uh, we're try still trying to figure out a date, you know. And he's he's this guy is actually more cooperative. He's like, sorry, things are hectic here. I'm really busy, and he is a really busy guy. I can understand that. And he's like, let's schedule it for the beginning of November. So I'm like, okay, how do these dates work? Haven't heard from him yet, so I gotta follow up with him again. But he is he is a much more busier guy. They're both busy guys, but this guy's much more busier, so I can understand that. And I'm also a nobody and my podcast is nothing and he's just doing this to help me out. So if he doesn't or does get on, it doesn't really affect him and he's not gonna care. But I care because I want them on. <sighs> Bunch of nonsense. Do you really care? Do you listening right now? Do you really care what I just said about having guests on? Probably not. You're probably listening like, okay, move on, bitch. I said it. I said another one. You better block and remove the video, YouTube. Maybe even saying that is, is a fucking key phrase. I said it again. I can't help myself. Angry episode this is. Huh? We're getting pretty angry today. Oh, give me some of those sound bites, please. Those are all dynamic banter sound bites. Yesterday was, or last night was the dynamic banter live Halloween episode. I, you're damn right I participated. You're damn right I did. And guess what happened? Oh, I didn't have it prepared. Oh, fucking fuck. What else is going to go wrong, huh? You're just not going to prepare on the podcast anymore? Now you got to sit here and do some bullshit banter while you go look for what you're looking for? Because you didn't prepare it? All right, so I went on. Okay, dynamic banter. I was, you know, it was a Zoom call. It was a Zoom call with like 500 people there. All right, the dynamic banter boys were there, Mike and Steve. Alana showed up and so did Zoya. Uh, Kevin Placky or Placky, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Uh, Ryan Faroki was there, and I was there along with a bunch of other people. Um, this was near the end of the podcast, so I'm just kind of, you know, I'm just funking around in my in my podcast set here studio, and. When I recorded this, I forgot to change the audio to 
you know, the other channel. So I did not get any audio from the Dynamic Banter Live uh, episode, podcast, uh, which sucks because they they actually, Steve brought me in, you know, everyone was muted. Uh, the The entire, you know, three quarters of the show, everyone's cameras were shut off, but then at this point, everyone's cameras were brought back on and then Steve was bringing people in if they had a question and they brought me in to the forefront and uh I was really high and I said a bunch of baloney oh shit yeah 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 (laughs) yeah well I'll say something to Joe yeah Joe see at this point Um, Steve yeah yeah, because I was, because Joe was like, yeah, I'm interested in this lady friend. And I'm like, Joe, no, you do not. You're heading in the wrong direction, man. You, you can't. I think Mike has it right. You can't <laughs> just jump right into the gates with this dynamic banner bullshit, you know? All right. Steve's talk. <laughs> I'm talking to Steve Zaragoza and fucking. I said it again. And Mike. But I didn't get any of the audio. <sighs> Which sucks. But I kind of made a fool of myself. And. I don't know. It didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. I don't, I don't even remember what I was going to say. Dynamic Banter Live. Let's title this. You guys can't see what I'm doing, but that's okay. All I'm saying is, I just, it was a, it was a, it was a good time. I feel like it could have been better. I feel like there was a lot of like, not a lot, but there was just like a few boring moments. It was like, okay, well, well, can we just move on to something more dynamic bantery? God, this episode's negative. <laughs> but it would have been really nice to have their audio as well. Fuck, that would have been nice. But I didn't do it right. I didn't record it right. And it's gone forever. They didn't record it. And if they did, then that would be beautiful. Because I could take it from there. <laughs> but no. Butter dog. Dog with the butter. I started following Count Von Count on... Was that his name? On Twitter. You know, the the... the the vampire from Sesame Street, Count Von Count, he counts all the time. He loves to count. And uh, so I just started following him. I had no idea what his content was. Because you know how you click follow on one person that gives you suggestions of other people and you, you end up on a follow train where you just keep following new people? Because I followed c- the Cookie Monster. The actual Cookie Monster. Not Cookie Monster. Cook- the Cookie Monster. This guy popped up in Elmo and a bunch of other fucking Sesame Street people. So I followed Count Von Count. And then this tweet shows up. 2,715. <laughs> and I read it in his voice and it made me laugh. Because I'm like, ah, he just tweeted a number. So I liked it. And then I went to his page. And then I realized... <laughs> Every day, he's just counting the next number. He's been counting for (laughs) 2,730 days. Every day, he just posts the next number. So tomorrow, we're going to see 2,731. (laughs) And it's like the commitment. Look, here's here's a suggestion right here. My diabetes. Or Grover (laughs) in Electric Mayhem. I'm going to follow these, actually. Here it goes. 2,727, 2,726, 2,725, There's and there's literally nothing else. I'm scrolling and I'm scrolling. 
He's literally just been counting for 2,730 days. Sean Connery's dead. Sean Connery's dead. Sean Connery's dead. Everybody knows Sean Connery is dead. At 90 years old. Today it happened. Can you believe it? Do you believe in life after love? I can feel something inside myself. I really do. <laughs> now I'm going to get copyright claimed for singing a song. I'm doing everything wrong. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I got bladder issues. No, I don't. I've talked about Chris Ramsey before, haven't I? Of course I have. I put him in a thumbnail once. Maybe. I'm sure I did. Anyway, he's a McGickin. He's a McGickin. A McGickie. A McGickian. A magician, okay? He's been doing very well, all right, along with his buddies, uh, uh, Michael Stewart, uh, Leonardo Frankfurt, and Eric LaCracker. They're all magicians. They've all been on Penn and Teller Fool Us, except for Chris. He was on a different Penn and Teller show with, uh, who was it? I don't remember who it was. Doesn't matter. But now, they have their own TV show on fucking True TV called Big Trick Energy. So I just want to give a big, big old congrats to these Canadian boys. I don't know if they're all Canadian, but I know at least Chris is. Ugh. Kanye gifts Kim Kardashian with a hologram of her late father. That's trending. Good. Good stuff. That's what we want, right? Remember when the only thing trending on Twitter was something to do with cor the illness? Remember that? Remember that? I remember making podcast episodes where I was like trying to find things to talk about, but all there was on the trending was the C word. I swear to God, if this episode gets blocked and removed, I'm going. I'm going right to Susan Wojcicki Jewski's house. And I'm going to pull down my pants on her front doorstep. I'm going to knock on the door. And when she answers the door, I'm going to say, hey. I'm going to squat and I'm going to shit on her doorstep. I'm going to look her in the eye while I'm shitting. And I'm going to say, please tell me why my videos keep getting removed. And she's going to be confused and scared and telling me to go away and probably calling her security but I'm going to say, hold on, just tell me why. And she's going to go, okay, I'll tell you why. <sighs> and she's going to reach into her purse, which she has conveniently by the front door for some reason. And she's going to say, it's this, it's because of this. And she's going to hand me uh, a, a piece of paper with the reason why. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to look at her and I'm going to say, why? Why didn't you just tell me this to begin with? Why didn't you give me this piece of paper to begin with? And she's going to say, well, because we just want you gone. We don't want you on our platform anymore. So we figured if we just didn't tell you why we're removing your videos, you would just get too frustrated and leave and never come back. 
and then I'm going to read the piece of paper. I'm going to take the piece of paper, I'm going to put it to my face, and I'm going to read it. And I'm going to be like, oh, it all makes sense now. And then I'm going to take that piece of paper, and I'm going to wipe my ass with it, because I'm done shitting. And then I'm going to stand up, pants still down, because I'm holding a piece of paper, I can't put my pants up with one hand. It's a shit-covered piece of paper. And I'm going to say, Susan, I only got one thing left to say. And then I'm going to just stick the shitty piece of paper to her forehead. I'm going to pull up my pants. I'm going to button it up and zip it up and do the do the belt. And then I'm going to, I'm going to walk away. Stay back, security. I can, ha- I can, I can leave myself. I'm gonna turn around. And I'm gonna walk away. And as I'm walking away, I get to the gate. And I'm like, "Can you please open the gate, Susan?" She says, "On one condition." And I say, "What's that?" And she says, <laughs> "I can't believe she would say this, but she says, be here." Tomorrow, 12 p.m., my bedroom. <laughs> you know you know what you got to do. And I go, ooh, I don't know about that. Uh, and she's going to go, it's either that or we're just going to remove your channel. And I'm like, oh, all right. Guess we're doing it then. And then she goes, okay. Perfect. And then she opens the gates, and away I go. And do I show up the next day at 12 p.m.? Well, yeah, I have to. I don't want my channel to just go away. can't just remove my channel. You know, it took years and fucking years to build it to where it is, and it's still nothing. <laughs> but all that content I have from childhood to now... I mean, come on, if that went away, whew, oh, that would be rough, that would be rough, like a dog barking, we're gonna do, um, a today I fucked up, okay, we've been, we were doing am I the asshole, but today we're gonna do today I fucked up, I said it twice, and I'm gonna say it again, T-I-F-U. Today I fooped up. And then we're going to watch some TikToks. And then I'm going to talk about some crazy... I might talk about something else. And then that'll be it because I am hungry. I could eat a whole goddamn... You know how you're, you get so hungry that it almost feels like you're going to puke? That's where I'm at right now. Today, I fooped up by exploding Orbeez inside my vagina. It's going to be good. Using a throwaway account I made for another embarrassing FU years ago, unlike most FUs, this happened today. So, I really like Orbeez. I just think they're neat. A few months ago, me and my BF put a bunch of them in a big bowl to mess around with. We filled socks with the orbs and then put the socks on, dumped the orbs on each other when the other didn't expect it, stuff like that. I recommend that everybody play with a bucket of Orbeez at some point in their life. It's a good time. One of the things we did was put some in a condom, tie it off so the orbs were compacted together, and then stick it inside myself. No, it wasn't to satisfy some sort of egg sack sexual fantasy. Although if anyone here is into that, then Orbeez are the way to go. Mostly, it was just for shits and giggles. But it was surprisingly functional as a sex toy. So I kept it, and occasionally used it as a malleable G-spot stimulator that I cleaned after each use. So... <laughs> So today, BF and I were having a sexy time, and he decided to bring out the orb-filled condom. Then the condom broke, opening the floodgates for hundreds of orbs to fill my lady parts. I didn't feel them at first, 
but when I contracted my pelvic floor muscles, they gushed out like a multicolor alien egg. Obviously, the orbs had to come out, but the whole thing was more funny than frustrating. Both of us making cursed jokes and laughing. And to be honest, <laughs> the laughing helped push them out. The deorbing was a team effort and took about 10 minutes. All in all, it was strange but oddly enjoyable experience. <laughs> Though not one I want to repeat. Not the worst thing that can result from a condom breaking. Uh, Till dog... What does that mean? I don't know. I don't... I Look, I don't... There's lots of abbreviated lingo that I'm not familiar with. So it's T-L semicolon. Is that a semicolon? D-R? Is that her asking? I don't know. Am I the reason that there might be one day be, uh, in quotes, not for internal use, disclaimer for Orbeez. Edit. I figured this post would get some traction, but holy shit, this blew up fast. For everyone asking, Orbeez are polymer water beads that expand from about the size of a poppy seed to a centimeter in diameter. Also, thanks to everyone who commented with advice. Edit too. Muting this. And going back to my main account, thanks for 15 minutes of internet fame, y'all. If you buy Orbeez, have fun with them and stick them in your vagina. Just kidding, she didn't say that. She said be safe. But this was posted by... Oh, it was a throwaway account. So, throwaway Lamau. So I don't really have to comment on that. I know it's a site that's... Wait. I know a site that sells stuff like this. That's body safe. Well, let's take a look. Okay, this might be... <laughs> not appropriate for YouTube, so I might have to block this part out. This website's called primalhardware.com. And it says, warning, this page contains adult content. If you are under the age of 18 or do not wish to view adult content, you should not view this page. Hide under your bed or grease me up, baby. I'm greasing. Okay. For those who really like eggs. Eggs? Look at this stuff. Bork. Blip. Glorp, Grubera, what? Splorch, Bedbug, Brogoth, Squick, Oviopositor, Accessories. What? Need a safe costume for the bedroom? Take 10% off wearables, gear, and harnesses through Sunday. What the hell is ovipositor accessories? Look at this. You can make like eggs and stick them in your vagina. What? What else? I want to see what some of these things are. Like a bork. What's a bork? According to our latest research, it was found that this species of alien ties with its mate in a manner similar to Earth canines, the engorged penis locking into position for the depositing of eggs rather than sperm. Based on our popular fluffer dildo, Bork sports a nice set of large balls to provide a sturdy base and a knotted, moderately textured shaft that slays firmly, put once inserted. As gelatin eggs are pushed up through, the added girth creates intense pressure in all the right places, followed by a pop as the eggs are expelled out of the tip and into its host. Bork is designed to be used with our medium and small egg molds and insertion tool. Fetch one today! It'll give new meaning to the word sit and stay. Uh, okay, so 
the oviopositor accessories are what you put inside the things like the bork and you make love to the bork and the egg will slowly squeeze its way through the shaft of the bork ultimately ending up inside your bork in your pork <laughs> i've got bork in my pork <laughs> what about glorp let's let's just take a look at glorp and then we'll get out of here because this is 160 dollars bringing sex to a whole new dimension in our attempt to jump through time and space, we accidentally ripped a hole in a nightmarish parallel dimension crawling with all manner of hellish beings. Some of them slipped through before we could close the rift. And we found several of our scientists writhing on the floor in what we first perceived as agony, only to find it was actually mind-blowing pleasure. In an almost unintelligible ramble, they managed to describe the creatures they had caused their blissful stupor we have compiled enough of their testimony to replicate what we feel is an accurate likeness of the creature's appendages that were used to fertilize our crew your crew got fertile the long central member is hollow and is used to deliver large spherical eggs while the shorter feeler tentacles around the base tickle and massage the area around the insertion site Stimulating the host to be more receptive to its offspring. Hmm. Why don't they just say what it's used for? Why are they like beating around the bush? That <laughs> Let's beat around the bush. Butter dog. Dog with the butter. Dog with the butter. So since, you know, since we were just on the topic of funky sex toys and glorps and borks, let's talk about the Sperminator. I've been following this guy on TikTok for a while now. His name's Ken J. Quadruple Nine. Typical boomer move. But this guy's pretty smart, okay? They call him the Sperminator. Just look at him. The Sperminator. No, I'm just kidding. This guy's not the Sperminator. But uh, the way he, you know, framed his thumbnail here, it look he looks like a guy who would be considered the Sperminator. Just, you know. But he's just telling a story about the Sperminator. He's a doctor... He's been in the field for years and years now. He teaches, uh, he, and, and his whole TikTok account is just him telling stories of, of his procedures throughout his many years of being a doctor. And this is uh, one of the stories. I knew a doctor known as the Sperminator in Washington, D.C. Uh, this man uh, was a fertility doctor who ended up impregnating about 40 women and having 40 kids. Um, my wife knew one of the women who started noticing that her baby looked an awful lot like her fertility doctor and eventually uh, he was caught and uh, his license was removed. I think he may have been imprisoned. Um, I'm pretty sure he was, but I knew him because he invited a bunch of us medical students over for an apple cider party and we went over. There was no apple cider, but there were plenty of apples and apple presses. We spent three hours making apple juice or apple cider for him and at the end he gave us all each a tiny cup and i mean a tiny paper cup that could hold a few drops uh, enough to taste but not actually drink and we all thought that was very strange and uh it, looking back it was very sociopathic of him uh kind of typical of what they do but uh this man uh now you can find him on the internet if you look up the sperminator we were there in the 80s in dc wow we were there he was in it. He was in the thick of it. He should have known. He should have known that apple cider was a uh, up to no good. I mean, who invites friends over f for apple cider and then makes them press the apples and then gives them a tiny paper cup? I'm assuming like the ones you get at the dentist where they're like, wince your mouth out. 
Now let's spit it back into the cup. The Sperminator. But I feel like, you know, I would invite some friends over for apple cider. I would make them squeeze the apple juice themselves and then give them a tiny cup just so I could laugh at them and laugh later and be like, that was fucking hilarious. Bunch of sheep. <laughs> you know? I wouldn't do what the Sperminator did afterwards, but, you know, maybe the Sperminator's just got a good sense of humor. Have you ever thought about that? Maybe he's not a sociopath. Maybe he's just got a good sense of humor. Like this guy. This guy's got a great sense of humor about sperm. Hey! Where's the best place to shoot a cum shot? Oh, fuck, sick, huh? Hmm, this video might get copyright claimed because of that song. Who knows? Who cares anymore, am I right? I'm so hungry, I could eat a camel. I could eat a camel, oh yeah, oh yeah. I said, I am so hungry, I could eat a camel. I could eat a camel, oh yeah. Okay, ladies and, and funkers. We've got three videos left. One, two, and three. By looking at these three videos, which one do you want to watch? Can you predict what's going to happen in each video just by looking at the thumbnail? I already know because uh, I watched them. I prepared them. The one in the middle is pretty obvious. The one on the left, you could definitely figure that one out. But the one on the right, I don't know. Can you figure that one out? Take a look around. Get some clues. It's not easy to figure out, but you might be able to. So we're going to start with the most obvious one. And you tell me if you were right about this one. Let's watch. Even in this age of automation, cigarettes are still made by hand. But whereas it would take most of us best part of a day to make a packet of 50, and then not perfectly, skilled workers like this Holy produce about 1,200 moly. a day. she can fucking roll. Look how old she is. Man. I wonder if she can do that with fucking marijuana. This is part of the manufacture. A marijuana cigarette. A single one that would Tabitha the rolls a marijuana cup. cigarette. As it is, the machine makes over 1,000 every minute. Why did everyone talk like that back in the day? She makes over 1,000 in a minute. And the music was always a... So did you did you figure out what this what the one on the left is all about? Have another have a closer look. What do you think? What do you see? What do you know? What do you want to do? Butter dog, dog with the butter. I love butter dog. I just want to fly. Put your arms around me, baby. Put your arms around me, baby. Ah, ah. Wish I had the audio from the Dynamic Banter live clip, but I don't. Oh, he's 
Oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. Oh, I don't remember the handshake. I wonder if that music is going to get me copyright claimed. Hmm, I don't know. It probably will. But guess what, folks? It's the last video. It's the hardest one to predict what it was. Let's see if your guess was correct. More music. Oh. Oh. Man. Oh. That guy's asleep. Oh, he woke up. Maybe he was just in awe. Damn, they're all in <laughs> shock. They're all mind blown. <laughs> <laughs> That was pretty good. I just want to see him do it again. I want to be able to do that. I can't snap that fast. My thumb's <laughs> fucked up. I, I sliced my thumb. I cut it right open. I was cutting onions and I went, ching! Topped a big piece of chunk of meat off but uh, not all the way it was just hanging open so i'm like ow i went to the bathroom wrapped it up in paper drip it, toilet paper blood everywhere in my onions on the floor on the wall on the table you know and then i was like i'm gonna pass the fuck out so i sat down and then i'm like i just wrap more paper towel on here and duct tape it but it, the blood there was so much blood it just kept coming through it was coming through this big wad of paper towel so i was like okay i'm either gonna die here or i'm gonna wait long enough for it to clot but it's probably not going to because it's such a big fucking wound so i said to myself okay i don't really feel like dying right now so went to the hospital and they I thought I was going to get stitches, but they just glued it back together. And, uh, yeah. So now it's, like, healing. I don't know what it looks like. I haven't looked at it since this happened. Well, it'd be exactly a week from today. It doesn't smell very good, but it's probably because it hasn't been washed in a week. And there's lots of dried blood. And a dead piece of chunk of skin glued down Ugh, i don't even want to think about it like i don't even know what this is going to look like when i take this bandaid off am i going to have to cut that chunk of skin off Ugh, i don't want to do that well that's it for this episode of the dynamite gizmo podcast I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell notification. Do all that right now. Just please, just do it right now. And something good will come your way. I, I tr Just trust me. Okay, something good will come your way. If you hit and do, you just do those things. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification. Just do it, please. I'm begging you. My life depends on it. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye!